So normally, I would wait until stream to talk about stuff like this, but in all honesty, I feel like if I wait until stream, I'm going to lose a lot of these thoughts and a lot of these good ideas and these connections that, um, you know, I'd rather not wait. I'd rather just record it now. Let's talk about Concord. For those of you who haven't heard, Concord, which has been out for less than two weeks, is being delisted off of platforms at the end of this week, this coming Friday. And also, they're promising refunds as well, which is not a good sign. Uh, Ryan Ellis, the game director, said here in the PlayStation blog, While many qualities of the experience resonated with players, we also recognize that other aspects of the game and our initial launch didn't land the way we'd intended. Therefore, at this time, we decided to take the game offline beginning September 6th and explore options, including those that will better reach our player. Now, of course, the only logical thing I see happening here is that the game becomes free to play if Sony doesn't lay off everybody who's working on the game first. To me, this just highlights all the flaws that are currently going on with the American video game industry right now. And I'll get to that in a second. But first, I want to talk about how Concord could have easily avoided all this. Now, apparently, the game was in development for eight years. That's usually not a problem. However, there are so many things that they did wrong with this. Number one, the game debuted back in May on the PlayStation State of Play, and then it launched this year. Concord launched on August 23rd, 2023. Release dates normally don't mean too much, except for the fact that just three days earlier, another game was released that had been marketed for well over a few years that goes by the name of Black Myth Wukong. Also, for those of you who didn't know, when Black Myth Wukong debuted on Steam, it had over 37 million players. You want to know how many players Concord had when it debuted? Under Ooh. 700. I know this is kind of beating a dead horse, but here's my take on how all of this could have easily been avoided. Number one, Concord should have been free to play from the very beginning. I truly do believe that it probably would have done better if it was free to play from the get-go. And, this might be kind of a controversial saying here, it should have been in early access during 2020 or 2021, when the PlayStation 5 was still new. Because, at the very least, it would have been something else for players to play, and at that point, all the problems that are currently hurting Overwatch were really starting to show at that point. If it had been advertised for several years in early access, and then had its full launch this year, I think it would have done better because if you guys remember during my reaction of the state of play when i saw it i kind of bemoaned the fact that it was another hero shooter and i wasn't too interested in it yay i mean i don't know i'll have to see more it looks cool i guess i mean at first i thought it was like a discount knockoff uh guardians of the galaxy i almost think that sony or whoever was in charge of it was hoping for lightning in a bottle again because you want to know what game they didn't have too much faith in that ended up becoming one of the biggest breakout hits of the year? Prove to yourself that you have the strength and the courage to be free. Join the Helldivers. Ah, yes, Helldivers 2. A game that had received a moderate amount of advertising from Sony, but it was kind of marketed as a generic shooter with aliens. And then when the game was released and clips of how fun the game was spread across social media like wildfire, it became the biggest seller of February 2024 to the point where the sales were on par with freaking Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, one of the biggest games of the year. Helldivers got so popular, the player base was throttling the servers and they didn't have enough space. You literally had to wait in a queue in order to play the game. Again, I almost feel like that Sony was hoping for lightning in a bottle with this again. But the fact that the marketing period was way too short. Again, the gameplay debut trailer debuts in May. And then the game hits open beta in July. And then the game is fully released in August. Going back to Overwatch for a second. The debut trailer of Overwatch was in November of 2014. The game didn't release until May of 2016. There is a two-year gap between debut and launch, and between those periods, there were so many betas to help make sure the game was the best that it could be. Concord should have done the same thing. Concord should have been early access from the very beginning and started in 2020 or 2021. It started off with a base roster of eight different characters. I know the full roster is 16 characters, but you start off with eight characters, and then you increase from there. And I feel like it would have done so much better I mean, hell, look at Valorant. Some people say that the reason why Concord failed 
is because it took so long to make. I do agree with that, but I do think that they could have easily mitigated so much of the financial damage if they just released it early access, free to play in 2020 or 2021, especially during the early PS5 lifecycle. Because how awesome would that have been to be like, oh, hey, here's an exclusive PlayStation free to play hero shooter that you can play, especially during the pandemic. I feel like it would have done a lot better at that time a lot better everything that was done with concord is almost a textbook example of how a triple a company screwed up a launch of a game and that's sad because you know what i think it did have some potential but it was handled wrong now as to why i think this game highlights all the flaws that are going on with the american gaming industry right now concord is rumored to have costs 200 million dollars i understand with technology progressing and you know graphics becoming more lifelike and everything and of course some costs are gonna fall. but i feel like the american game industry has fallen into this trap of how nearly every game needs to be at a hollywood level of presentation and graphics and storytelling and i feel that all this started with the last of us now don't get me wrong the last of us is an incredible game definitely one of the best if not the best of its generation and deserves all the critical acclaim however the last of us was also the game that was really making hollywood turn their heads and go oh look at this games can be an art form games can tell a really compelling story that films can so on and so forth i remember this game has such a monumental impact that it now has its own live action series that has one of the most beloved stars in Hollywood playing one of its leads right now. Now, I guess some of you could argue, no, that started with Metal Gear Solid on the original PlayStation. Metal Gear Solid is definitely one of the best games of all time. It also deserves all of its critical acclaim. However, the entire story of Metal Gear Solid relied on the talent of the voice actors who did an incredible job but unfortunately because of the technology at the time with the graphics and everything character movements are janky they're not super expressive they're limited to just what the system could do at that point and also to a random mishmash of 2d facial expressions during codec calls that's all good and everything but also the metal gear series also has many over-the-top moments that make you go oh right i'm playing a game last of us didn't have that last of us was very grounded and real and everything and yes you could argue but what about metal gear solid 2 metal gear solid 3 metal gear solid 4 again while those are great games they do tell really compelling stories that are on the level of hollywood films they still have moments where you just look at it and go oh right i'm, I'm playing a game like look at how silly this is and don't get me wrong the reason why the last of us also did well as a game is because all of the cutscenes and the story were complemented by the gameplay. It had just as much gameplay to back it up as it did with the story. And the same goes for the Uncharted games too by the same company. While yes, they had very grounded realistic stories that were like in the vein of Indiana Jones and everything, they also had a ton of fun gameplay to back it up. I almost feel like games these days, especially American made games, are falling into this pit of they need to have these huge budgets in order to you know, in order to be profitable. I mean, hell, look at what happened to Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. That game was also apparently made for over $200 million. And just recently, the company that made it, Rocksteady, which again, are the creators of the incredible Batman Arkham series, have now been hit with layoffs just because they couldn't meet quota. American corporate greed is ruining gaming because it's literally like... They'll spend all this money to make a game that, by all accounts, could be great. And then it doesn't make its margins back within a limited amount of time. It's just like, okay, fire everybody, close the company. Hell, look what happened to Destiny. The final shape was released this year, and it garnered so much critical acclaim. I loved it. I thought it was one of the best Destiny campaigns since... It's definitely in the top three Destiny campaigns for me. It was so damn good. But because it didn't hit, like, these forecast projections, and for many other reasons I'm not going to get into, or else it's going to be a giant, like, five-hour-long rant about the CEO, people got laid off. 
this is the problem with the industry right now because while i do hope that concord comes back in a free-to-play thing i also feel like the company's not going to get there and either they're going to be hit with huge layoffs or Sony's going to shutter the company. Also, you know, look what happened to Tango Gameworks earlier this year. Yes, they have been saved. But remember how they made a critically acclaimed exclusive Xbox game that won a prestigious amount of warrants and then slam. You guys are done. Oh my god. This is why I feel that Japanese game developers right now are leading the charge with the video game industry in the whole. Because Japanese game developers understand that while story is important, gameplay is just as important, if not more important. I mean, hell, look at Nintendo. Look at Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Look at Breath of the Wild. Look at From Software with Elden Ring and Armored Core 6. Now, you could argue, well, wait, have there been any games that did cost a lot recently? That sold really well. The only immediate example I can think of off the top of my head is Spider-Man 2. It originally had a budget of $270 million and apparently ran over $30 million with the developmental costs just to make that. But that's also Spider-Man and it's a Marvel IP, so of course it's going to cost a ton of money. But also, that game is another example of the story is really good, but the gameplay is super important too. Tears of the Kingdom took six years to make. And it's being said here that it, there's no exact amount, but they do say that Tears of the Kingdom costs about 100 to 150 million. For comparison's sake, I spent over 100 hours in Tears of the Kingdom. Like, I played through it earlier this year, and I spent well over 100 hours playing that. That alone is a prime example of why I think right now the industry is going to be led by Japanese and other Eastern developers and also indie creators as well. You don't need like millions and millions and millions of dollars to make a good story too. There was an indie game that came out in the past decade that was developed for around $50,000 and it's made millions and has one of the best stories I've ever played in gaming. I'll give you one hint as to what it is. So, you know, I could go on and on for hours. I don't know if I've made any sense here. First of all, the corporate greed needs to stop. That is just how it is. And I'm not saying that games shouldn't have a big budget. Depending on what the game is, they should. They should. I don't wish ill will upon the team that made Concord. I do hope that they can recover from this. And I do think that the world of Concord has a lot of potential. Maybe it shouldn't have been done as a hero shooter. Maybe it should have been done as maybe, maybe something like Marvel's Ultimate Alliance. I mean, hell, the only example I could think of about a hero shooter that had very little marketing and then just became this huge sensation it's Apex Legends. A trailer for that was released, and then it just became this huge thing. Hashtag, we still want Titanfall 3, goddammit. I've probably been ranting here, but I do think that Concord is highlighting a lot of the problems that are going on with the American video game industry right now. Problems that need to be fixed, because unfortunately, these problems cause very real ramifications. And it's not for the people who are in charge of making these things. It's for the people who are actually making the games. People that are sitting down day after day, creating these amazing things and are probably being subjected to crunch and many other aspects that, you know, are negative only to release a game that they're super proud of and then at the end of it all, they're being told, hey, sorry, kid, but uh, you gotta go. It needs to be fixed. And, and hopefully it will be. I mean, I know I'm just one person on the internet whose impassioned plea won't reach all the CEOs of all the gaming companies in America. But... <sighs> Really, this has to stop because people are getting hurt because there's a very real cost and the real cost are passionate people who want to create these things. As for what's going to happen with Concord, I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. And who knows? Maybe if it does come back, it might come back better than ever.